Happy birthday to you. Is it literally today? No, it was last week. Well done. So my girlfriend's Nice. A whole weekend of beer? Yeah. All right, ladies. And debauchery. All right, ladies. What happens in Rehoboth? That's the spirit. I always forget how goofy our company name sounds because most people just think it's the name of an exotic brewery, but it's a place. Dogfish Head's a jut of land off of Booth Bay Harbor, Maine. I grew up in Western Mass, got kicked out of my high school, so I'm one of the few people that have a college degree but no high school diploma, proud of that. After college, moved to Manhattan, you know, while working at this bar on the Upper West Side. In one week, had Chimay and Sierra Nevada, and like any college kid, I just drank what was cheap. And that blew my mind. Those were my epiphany beers. And within weeks, I bought a kit of homebrewing equipment. And on my way back to my apartment, passed a bodega that was having a special on kind of rotting, super ripe cherries. I was like, oh, those are cheap. I'm just gonna buy them. I came home and I had a pale ale recipe that the homebrew store had. I was like, that's cool. I'm gonna do that recipe. Why, but why not squish all these cherries into it too and see what happens? That was a monumental sort of existential moment for me where I'm like, okay, this is the journey I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna try and make a living being a brewer and I'm glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's wearing pajamas today, such as Kate right here. <laughs> because we're celebrating daylight savings time. We did this and opened as an off-centered brewery for off-centered people in 95. I'm very off-centered, just take a look at me. We were frankly looked at as weirdos and assholes for screwing with the tradition of brewing. For us to start our brewery as the smallest commercial brewery in America, as an ex-punk rock loving guy, I feel we were able to take that punk rock ethos into craft beer. You do everything yourself. That get in the van mentality is what I'm really glad to be a part of in the craft brewing community. Good morning, gents. I'm gonna check on the scrap bowl. Every day, I either go for about an hour paddleboard or a bike ride after I've had a double espresso. Those are probably my favorite moments of the day when it's not having to think about the business of beer, but the recipes themselves. And then I jot those down and, and come back to the brewery and, and elongate them into a few paragraphs that describes what I'd like to do for a test brew, like we're doing here today at the pub. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Looks like meatloaf. One of the first beers we made when I was writing the business plan was what we ended up calling chicory stout. It was sort of the prototype for a breakfast stout. And I did that recipe at, at first at home in the fall of 1994. So right now we're doing a 20th anniversary recipe of a breakfast stout. So it has maple syrup from our family farm in Western Mass. It still has the chicory and coffee. It has applewood smoked barley in it. Probably most significantly, it has scrapple in it. And scrapple is a pork product that's beloved by breakfast eaters around this region, but I do think it's the first time it's been incorporated into the mash of, of a commercial beer. My favorite days of work are coming down here and making beers that have never been made anywhere before. So I'm proud to say I'm the least technical and academically trained brewer at Dogfish Head. It reminds me how lucky I am to have gotten these many talented people around us. I could have never dreamed of a dogfish head of this scale. We can put out in 24 hours more than it took me the first three years I was open to make. Our brewery is a little over 200,000 square feet. As you go into the brew house, here you see the beautiful cedar walls that reminds people of all the wood-aged beers we've been doing for almost two decades. And in front, you see the beautiful 200-barrel brew house and the shadow of these beautiful state-of-the-art modern tanks. You see our little jalopy, MacGyvered, half-barrel brew house that I built with friends in 1996 our early vibrating football game that we did our continual hopping with. And then from there you go down and see our wood aging room, which has the biggest wooden brewing vessels built in America since before Prohibition. You go back and you see our automated bottling line, and a whole separate room that's attached to the original brewery by what we call the beer umbilical cord.
If we were in Germany, this door would get busted open and the authorities would come in and seize these plates of scrapple because there's this thing called the Rheinheitsgebot, which is the Bavarian Beer Purity Act of 1516 where their government basically mandated for the rest of the world that beer could only be grains and water and hops. But we've been brewing outside the Rheinheitsgebot for uh, our entire existence. We don't take ourselves very seriously at Dogfish. We do take brewing very seriously. So while the sound of a breakfast beer with scrapple in it might be goofy, if we can make it taste awesome, then this was a worthwhile experiment. When we opened here in 95, I remember we boiled it down to the two things that are at the heart of our company, wood grilled food and homemade beer. And these neons have stayed in this window for 19 years, screaming that out to people as they drive by. There's extra if you guys want to do like a scrap of pizza for lunch. One of the three, is it three that are left in there? Yeah, we'll have it at lunch. Hi guys, we're gonna walk through your world. So here we are with Chef Dennis. Basically, we take our Midas Touch beer, which is made with honey and saffron and grapes. So you see a little bit of the yeast that's left over in the process of making the vinegar. It takes an awesome beer, which is Midas, and turns it into like this cool green apple uh, vinegar. Even like the namaste chili sauce for our calamari is just a shit ton of namaste cooked down with lemongrass to enhance it. A shit ton of <laughs> specific chef volume. <laughs> you know, the beer is like the base of all our food. So now we're upstairs in the Rehoboth Brew Pub. We've had our distillery for over 12 years here at Dogfish. Back when we had no money, I delivered a lot of the beer myself. We took this road that would take me by this awesome metal scrapyard. And as I drove up, I was like, holy shit, that thing has the exact geometry of a 200-gallon pot still. The liquor comes out down here. This one has brown honey rum. This one has our gin in it. Basically, not only is everything handmade here, but it's hand-filled here. And it'll take two people like six hours to do one of these runs by hand. In fact, our distiller, I think I see. Graham, how are you? We had talked about doing the, uh, the Namaste spice rum, so taking that kind of the already well-known beer and spinning it to a spirit side of things. I'm looking forward to drinking that. So right now, the starches are still converting to sugars. All right, so right now I'm just gonna pull a little sample of uh, the wort to try and just, this is very early in the process. It'll give us a little bit of a flavor for where we're going. Sweet, smoky, a little bit bacony. Sure, maybe a scrapple beer is not gonna be the next IPA phenomena in America, but it makes us stronger brewers because we've brewed outside the lines of tradition. And that, I think, is what the craft brewing renaissance has all been about. It's like, with all due respect, England and Belgium, Germany, you guys are making awesome shit, but in terms of you telling us that our beers have to taste like those and be made with those ingredients, fuck you. It's a nice high five slash fuck you because we wouldn't have the opportunity to take these risks if the European breweries didn't do such an amazing job of establishing these great beer traditions that made beer the best selling adult beverage in the world. I want to keep having fun, come to work every day and really continue to experiment and work with people that are really passionate about what they do here. I hope that I continue to motivate and give the people I work with the tools to keep Dogfish growing and staying private and Delaware-based company for many decades to come. Come on down to Dogfish because we have wonderful people here. The beers are excellent. My favorite beer is gonna be the old school barley wine. Today we infused it with the Randall and so all it did was take a great tasting barley wine and just change it a little bit and guess what, it's still a great tasting barley wine. I love that.